thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's all in him. It's all in him. The fullness of the Godhead. It's all in him. It's all in him. It's all in him. The mighty God is Jesus and it's all in him. Oh, it's all in him. It's all in him. The fullness of the Godhead. It's all in him. It's all. The mighty God is Jesus and it's all, oh, it's all in him, it's all in him, the fullness of the Godhead, it's all in oh, it's all in him, it is all in him. The mighty God is Jesus, and it's all in my Savior. It's all in Him. Say it's all in Him. The fullness of the Godhead. It's all in. Oh, it's all in Him. Say it's all. And the mighty God is Jesus, and it's all my Savior. It's all in Him. Hey, it's all in Him. The fullness of the Godhead. It's all in. Oh, it's all in. Yes, it is. It's all in him. The mighty God is Jesus. It's all in. One more time. It's all in him. It's all. Fullness of the Godhead. It's all in him. It's all. My Lord, it's all. The mighty God is Jesus, and it's all in him. Praise the Lord, everybody. Tonight we honor God. We bless him for his kindness, his goodness. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Behold, what manner of love Father has bestowed upon us that we might be called the sons of God. Doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we do know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me. To eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Tonight we honor God. Thank God for being, amen, in the house of the Lord one more time. Turn with me to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter number one. Again, this is part two of an introduction to this great book that we continue tonight, amen, for us to cement our understanding and our thinking, amen, to be secure in the knowledge of the truth as the what the Bible teaches us in the book of Revelation. Uh, John has been sequestered on the Isle of Patmos. He is there not for, amen, uh, amen. He was sent there to die. That's what I want to, to, to begin with. John is sent to Patmos to die. But while he is sent there to die, God uses him to give life to many. 
God is able to turn negative situations into positive situations for the fulfillment of his will. Amen. God has a way of inconveniencing, inconveniencing us to fulfill his purpose. Amen. And while we're going through that inconvenience, we must submit to the will of God and say, yes, Lord, because God uses every circumstances in our life. Amen. To bring about his perfect will. So while he is there on the Isle of Patmos, we read, amen, that he is there in verse number two. He is there for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He is there to testify of Jesus Christ and of all things that he, that he saw. Blessed is he, verse number three, that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So the theme of Revelation is John, that the, there's a twofold purpose. Number one, Revelation has, has been written to encourage the church or the churches, these seven churches in Asia. It is written to encourage the church. And number two, the church is going through tribulation, going through trials. Amen. And number two, it has been written to warn the church. So twofold, it has been written to encourage them and to warn them. And this is the beautiful thing about Christ's ministry. In John chapter 1 and verse number 14, the Bible said, And the word became flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, that of the only begotten of the Father, watch this, full of grace and truth. Amen. Amen. Jesus is full of grace and truth. When Jesus spoke, he spoke with grace and with truth. Amen. And we, as we minister, we must minister with both grace and truth. Amen. Listen to this. It can't be all grace and it cannot be all truth because truth without grace can't help some people. Amen. It must be grace and truth truth so there must be encouragement and warning amen and we receive the encouragement when the lord when the lord encourages his church we rejoice and we are thankful for it and when the lord warns his church we must be glad for that too amen we must say amen and thank god for the warning amen it's like when we we we're driving and we on the radio and they tell us listen don't drive down church road because there is an accident. Take, take another route. You're grateful because if you don't get that information, you're going to be stuck. Amen. For two hours. So we must, be, we must be glad for the warning. Amen. Glad that the Lord loves us enough. Amen. To give us a word of warning. So Revelation is written, verse number four, to the seven churches. These seven churches that describe, some describe them as being um, atypical of the seven dispensations of time or the seven dispensations of the church, beginning with Ephesus, amen, and then ending as it were, amen, begins with Ephesus of these seven churches. Look at this, amen, let me get to the, get to the verse here. Uh, look at this in verse number in verse number 9, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God, here it is, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Amen. This coming Sunday, we will celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Amen. We will celebrate these 50th weeks of Amen. After the ascension, uh, 50 days rather, after the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. The celebration of the, uh, of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And, and John says something beautiful. We quote it all the time, but it's powerful. I was in the Spirit. Amen. I was in the Spirit. Not only was I in the Spirit, but the Spirit was in me. Amen. And it was because he was in the Spirit that he was able to commune with God because God speaks to us on the wavelength of the spirit. Amen. 
A man without the Spirit of God cannot hear, cannot be on the wavelength of God. Amen. I use this illustration for those of us who are old enough. Amen. We used to have, before we had MP3 players, we used to have a gram. Amen. Usually in the front room. Amen. Big gram. Amen. And it had a dial. Remember the dial? And then when you turned it on, you had to turn the dial to get to the right frequency. And when you were searching for the safe station, you would hear <laughs> distortion. But when you got to the station, when you got to the frequency, you heard clearly. Amen. Right now, beloved ones, in the world today, there is a lot of <laughs> Amen. And that <laughs> that's my, that's my, <laughs> that's my uh, sound effect for static. If you're not careful, all you will hear in the world is static. But the man or the woman that is filled with the Holy Spirit is able to tap into the heart of God. And while there is static going on around you, because you are communing in the Spirit, you're hearing a clear voice from God. Amen. So you, are, you and I are able to declare, even in this time when all kind of things is going on, that there is a God and Jesus is his name. I was in the spirit. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now remember now, the Lord's day is not synonymous of a day of the week. <clears throat> the Lord's day really, it would be, I can't say it would be better, but if I say it like this, I was in the spirit on the day of the Lord. On the day of the Lord. Now the day of the Lord is not a particular day of the week. The day of the Lord is the day of God's vengeance. It is the day of God's power. Amen. In the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord, amen, is when God is in control. Amen. The day of the Lord is when man's time has come to an end. The day of the Lord is when time clock has stricken the last hour. Man is no longer in control of the affairs of mankind. And now God is in control. So John says he was in the spirit, amen, on the, the day of the Lord, and he heard behind him a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha. That's the first letter of the Greek alphabet and Omega, amen. Remember last week I was trying to, amen, Alpha, Beta, that's the second letter, amen. Gamma, that's one letter. You can go down. Sigma, that's another, amen, amen. That's about as far as I can go. And then the last one now is Omega. And Jesus refers to himself here as Alpha. I am what? I am the beginning. And I am the end. In other words, the Lord is saying, I am the one that started time. Hallelujah. Remember now, God is eternal. God predates time. So in the beginning... The Genesis 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning, God. Amen. Now, this is basic, but it's, it's, it's powerful in this, it, 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 as well. It is not in the beginning of God. In the beginning, God. God predates in the beginning, God. God, it, he's saying, I was there at the beginning, and I will be there at the end. And God is in control with in, in, in control of everything in between. I am Alpha. Look at what he says in verse number 11. I am Alpha. And I am the Omega. I am the what? I am the beginning. And I am the end. And it's a blessing tonight, beloved ones, that we can trust the Lord. Amen. Everything that's going on in the world, God has seen this before. Amen. God set everything in motion. Hallelujah. And even though it looks like things are out of control, God, Isaiah said, he sits on the circle of the earth. Hallelujah. God is yet in control of what we deem to be uncontrollable. But because he is the preeminent God, he is the God that is alpha, he is the God that is omega, he is the God that is beginning and the end, Amen. He sits on the circle of the earth and he is just in control. 
my God, like a pilot in control, flying the plane through a storm, he is in control. Amen. If you've ever been on a plane and you're going through some turbulence, amen, the pilot don't just stop the plane or turn the plane around. The pilot just said, buckle up your seatbelt. Amen. And he is in, and he doesn't sound alarmed at all. We're going through. Just sit down for a moment, and that's God in control. God is so much in control that he can fall asleep in the middle of a storm. Amen. And yet he is in control. Because even though his eyes were closed, he was not asleep. Because our God never, it's just wonderful to know that we can trust him. Hallelujah. We can put our faith and our confidence in this Alpha and Omega God. Amen. We can put our trust in this God that knows the ending from the beginning. Amen. He has come to give us abundant life. And John has been given this privilege to see the things that will come hereafter. Hallelujah. He, he has been given the privilege to see what is going to come hereafter. And he is instructed by the Lord, whatever you see, write it in a book. Write it and send it to these churches. Here they are. They are Ephesus. Amen. And they are Smyrna. We'll get into these, amen, as we go through. And unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatria, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. All right? Now, let me just talk about the Laodicean church. Turn with me. Let's just do this. Go to, go to chapter 2. Go to chapter 2 and, uh, and go through to chapter 3. Let me just make sure. Yes, go to chapter 3 and verse number 14. Now, remember now, we have Ephesus, the first church that is mentioned, and Laodicea is the last church that's mentioned. Remember, the church of Ephesus, the Bible said, had lost their first love. The, the Bible says the Lord was instructing them to return to their first love. Huh? I have someone against you. Amen. You have left your first love. Amen. Go back and do your first works over. In other words, there is a chance that if you repent. Now remember now, repent is not just crying, you know. Hallelujah. I, I, I heard Bishop Dunn preach a message one time and he said, convicted but not converted. Amen. Repentance is not just crying. The word repentance literally means to turn. Amen. So you're going in one way, one direction, and when you repent, you turn. Amen. Amen. There are many people that come and they will be convicted, but they will not, not convert it. And the purpose of the word of God is not only to convict us, but to convert us, for us to change. So John says to the church in Ephesus, you've got to change. You must repent. Now this last church, look at what it says in verse number 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, saith the amen and faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. That's clear. He said I would that you were either hot or cold. Amen. Either one or the other. Amen. But the lukewarm thing, he said, I'm going to literally spew you out of your mouth, out of his mouth. And then when you look at the history of the Laodicea and where it was located and how far, amen, they would bring water in. By the time it got to the end, of it, it was lukewarm. So they understood John was using language that they could understand. Lukewarm water was not appetizing. Amen. And John uses this illustration. The Lord uses this to describe. Now watch this. I know that thou works that thou art neither hot, cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now listen to this, 17. Because thou sayest I am rich. Now, now remember now, beloved ones, Thank you, Lord. 
Because thou sayest, I am rich. These are not the words of a congregation, you know. This is the spirit of that church. Not words. It's the spirit. The words say, the, the words to the spirit say, I, I don't need anything. I have everything I need. I'm rich. I'm rich. And, and beloved ones, when we consider this, you heard me say that these seven churches describe seven seasons. It describes seven dispensations of our church. And when we consider where we are today, and I don't, amen, let me say that. Yeah, I don't mean it in a disrespectful way. When we consider where we are today, God has been good to us. My God in heaven. My God in heaven. I understand um, I, I, uh, I, I spoke to Elder McLean. He's traveling today to Florida, to, to Mother Hammy's home. Girl, and he called me just, you know, just check. He's a bishop. Heathrow Airport is jammed full of people. Now, well, listen to what I'm saying. Now, they tell us we're in a, we're in a what? Cost of living crisis, you know. But the cost of living has not stopped people from booking their holiday to go. He said Heathrow, now if Heathrow is full, you know Gatwick is full. So the point that I'm making, beloved ones, even for those of us that the Lord, I mean, we have been blessed. My God in heaven, I thank God I don't need any more clothes. Don't tell nobody I can. Amen, I don't need any more. If you, if you hear Bishop said he's going to buy some clothes, tell Bishop, you see, I, beloved ones, God has blessed us. Amen. Amen. God has been good. And if we're not careful, we can get to a place where we feel we are in need of nothing. Hallelujah. I have everything I need now. Huh? And this was the spirit of the Laodicean church. They said, 17, the spirit of the church was, we're rich. We are increased with goods and have need of nothing. But listen to what the voice of the Lord back to the Spirit. The Lord says, when I look at you, thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. My God. Now remember now, the Spirit of the church is saying, we are rich. Amen. Now remember, rich now, they are looking at things through the eyes of their flesh. They're living in nice homes and dry. We are rich. If we need to do anything, we can just go and do it. But the Lord says, when I look at you, I see that you're poor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When I look at you, I see that thou art poor and I counsel you. Amen. Look at this description. Thou art wretched, miserable, poor. Blind and naked. My God. These are, these are descriptive words. They're, they're, yes, that's a terrible condition for anybody to be in. If you ever told anybody that you were wretched, if you ever told anybody that you were miserable and poor, somebody would have mercy on you. It's a terrible place for a church to be in, for God to look at the church. That's why the Lord tells us, you know, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so are his ways. Amen. You can guarantee that if God is going one way, man is going another way. Hallelujah, glory to God. You can better believe that if God is saying yes, mankind is going to say no. Glory to God. Amen. And the spirit of the church is saying we have everything, but the voice of the Lord is saying that you have nothing. Verse number 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold. Hallelujah. Gold. You know, and this is, this is um, let me just pause a little bit here. You see, this is one of the fallacies of this. Now, beloved ones, what I'm about to say, don't think I don't believe in prosperity. I, I just said God has blessed us. But you see, some people take blessing 
to mean God's approval. All right, all right, all right. And it does not always mean that because someone is living large that they have been approved by God. And that is what the challenge was about. They felt that because God had blessed them with goods, that that must mean that God is in favor of them. God said, no, no. Amen. Just because you were blessed, does that mean that I approve? He says to them in verse number 18, he said, go. He said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see us. In other words, the Lord saying to them, open your spiritual eyes. Hallelujah. Open your spiritual eyes to the condition that you're in. And know that even though what you consider to be valuable, I consider them to be dumb. What you consider to be advancement and prosperity, amen, I consider it nothing. I've said this statement many, many times. The Lord does not bless us to bankrupt us. Amen. All right, let me see if I can illustrate it. All right. Sometimes, you know, beloved ones, it's the wisdom of God that will instruct a man or a woman to take the less paying job. All right. You have two job offers, one for, all right, say, 60K and another one for 95K. Come on, beloved ones. In our flesh, of course we're going to want the big one. We, all we see is the numbers. Huh? But what we don't see is that when you take the 95K, you stress every day. You don't have no time to worship. You don't have no time to pray. You don't have no time to do nothing. It's just work, 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 work. You, that's not a blessing, beloved. No, no. So what I'm saying to you, the Lord does not bless us on one hand to bankrupt us on another. Amen. If you've got to work seven days a week, 12 hours a day, to cash that 95K, hear me, you stress every day. Amen. You leave home at 6 and you're not coming home to 8 in the evening. You might be living in a nice house, but you won't even be able to enjoy it. So the wisdom of God says, you know what? Take the one that's less. Amen. But at least you can have your bank holidays off. and You don't have to stress out. And you can, it's the wisdom of God. Amen. It's the wisdom of God. So if we're not careful and we always judge things through the eyes of our, of our flesh, we will make decisions that are not congruent with our spiritual lives. Glory to God. That's why a man with the spirit, a woman with the spirit, sees beyond what they can see. Hallelujah. So what did, what did the Lord say to them? You must buy. What is this? Anoint thine eyes. Glory to God. I wish that everybody was here tonight. Anoint your eyes so that you're not fooled with what you see. Hallelujah. 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 Have, grow up in the spirit so you have a level of discernment to see beyond what you can see. Amen. You see, the Spirit of God, I go back to how it began and Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. You see, beloved ones, a man that's in the Spirit will talk foolishness to a man that's operating in the flesh. The Bible said the carnal mind it can't please God. Can't please God. So there are two, in, in relationship, it's not just about being in relationship, you know. We, in, in, I'm talking, there's, there's a word called compatibility. I didn't hear a loud amen on that one. There, there's something called compatibility. Amen. Because just two people love each other don't mean they're going to get on. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Amen. So there is something called compatibility. We have got to be on the same page. Hallelujah. And even on the page, we need to be in the same paragraph. Amen. And what God is saying, a man that is not spirit-led, He's not, even, he's not even in the book. So you're speaking spirit. You're talking spirit. But all he's, ta all he's seeing is flesh. 
And beloved ones, let we must be so careful that the spirit of the world does not invade the church. My God in heaven, we've got to be so, we have got to be alert so that our eyes might be open. I was saying this the other day, you know, and I'm in a lot of meetings and a lot of bishops, and what are we going to do? Somebody at the table must say, what is the spirit saying? My God. If we're not careful, we're going to let the charity commission run the church. Somebody at the table must be saying, let's stop for a moment. What is the spirit saying? Oh, the charity commission, the charity. Somebody got to say, Bishop, can we just pause and pray? Is there anybody here listening to the spirit? Because it's the Holy Spirit. John said, I was in the Spirit. That's the problem. I was, that's John said, the only way I could get this revelation, I had to be in. Let me tell you something, saints. I'm teaching tonight. Don't, if I'm playing basketball, don't bring Tiger Woods my way. Don't bring Tiger my way because Tiger don't have no basketball. I need Kobe Bryant, God rest his soul. I need, who I need? Michael Jordan. Because you, if Tiger Woods, as great a golfer, does everybody know who Tiger Woods is? As great a golfer as Tiger Woods is, if you put him on a basketball court, he's out of his league. And in the church, the challenge with the 21st century church, we got too many people out of position. No. They're trying to do a spiritual thing, but they're not spirit-filled. They, 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 and, and I hear it all the time. Somebody got to say, what is the spirit saying? Now, if we're going to have a club, then we don't need spirit for that. Amen. If we're going to just have a, if it's just going to be a place to hang out, you don't need to fast and ask God for direction. But if, you, if we want to be on the wavelength of God, somebody got to say, you know, the Holy Spirit, and Pentecost Sunday, you know the Holy Spirit speaks. The, the Bible, in the book of, the, in the Acts of the Apostles, several times we hear the Holy Spirit spoke. Remember? When Ananias and Sapphira lied in them. Remember what Peter said to them? Peter said, you didn't lie to me, you know. <laughs> You're missing it. Peter said, you didn't lie to me. If it was left up to me, you'd stay alive. But you lied to the Holy Spirit. That, that's what you lied. You didn't lie to me. You lied to the Holy Spirit. So the Bible, the, the point that I'm making, the Spirit... When the spirit must be in operation in God's house. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching, I just got off a call, I'm teaching people all the time. I, I say this, oh, Bishop, I'm leading worship and nobody's moving. It's not your job to move people. I'm preaching and people just sitting there. It's not your job. That's the Holy Spirit's job. That's too much responsibility for me to make people jump. and ch That's too much. No, 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 no. That's the Holy Spirit's job. And so what happens, you know, beloved one? I, I was saying the other day, I was saying the other day, you see, there was a time, I remember when we were young in ministry, you know, young time, and just young, just starting out. And when we preached in like a message, we were saying more hallelujah and amen than anything else. But one of the older ministers or preachers would come and say, I pass you. You know what they're saying? I connect with the, you see people, saints of God, let's not make this thing personal. No, no, they don't like, it, it ain't you that they don't like. It, it's the spirit. That you, there's, you're not doing anything. It's the spi spirit connects to what? Spirit. Spirit can't bless flesh. Flesh don't want spirit. Amen. Spirit blesses spirit. So the man that is spirit filled can only be fed by a man that's spirit filled. 
a woman that is spirit filled can only be blessed by a woman that's spirit filled. This ain't got nothing to do with whether I like you or don't like you. My spirit needs to be fed. And what you're doing, it might sound good, but it ain't feeding my spirit. It's not doing anything for my spirit. It's not blessing me. Hallelujah. And I'm just too old now just to jump up, just to make people feel good. I come to church so my spirit is fed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody just worship and say hallelujah. I'm too long in the tooth now to play Simon Says when I come to church. I need somebody who has a, child of God, where I am in the Lord now, I need somebody with a weighty anointing. Amen. No lightweight can bless me now, man. I'm, I'm, I'm too long in the tooth now. I need somebody with some weight. So if you're going to preach, prepare. Don't just come to me with Mary had a little lamb. Come with a word. Because my soul needs feeding. Lord, am I in the right church tonight? You see, you see now and then, you know, everybody can. You can run back to McDonald's and pick up a... a, a or whatever, Mac. But you can't live off that. Hallelujah. You go on a fish pond road and look at hunger take you and you see McDonald's. You can jump in and get a, a Big Mac. <laughs> but if you're going to grow spiritually, you need food, man. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You need food that's been marinated. You need something that... Amen. You need, and mama used to soak the peas overnight. You don't need no microwave blessing. Why? Because your soul has reached a place of maturity in God. Where, listen to what I'm saying. And it's not about you being whatever. Everybody can't bless you these days. No, everybody can't. So come on, don't just put the mic in anybody's hand. Because right now we need the spirit of they that hunger and thirst, there's a, there's a hungering and thirsting, there is a, there, there's a hungering and thirsting that we are, we're only spirit now, my God, only spirit now, only, I need spirit now, I need spirit, deep calleth unto deep, hallelujah, deep calleth unto deep, and so I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I was able, the Lord was, because I was on the Spirit's wavelength, the Lord was able to reveal to me what I could not see in my flesh. Hallelujah, glory to God. And to the church, he said, I count, he said, by, anoint thine eyes with eye sound. The devil wants to keep us blind. Hallelujah. He wants us to remain in darkness. Darkness is synonymous with spiritual blindness. Jesus said of the Pharisees one time, you have eyes but you can't see. You have ears but you can't hear. Hallelujah. So what did John write to John? They that have an ear. He's not talking about these. Anymore. He's talking about the ear of the spirit. The spiritual ear man. Amen. The spirit has eyes and the spirit has ears. He said, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Not what the preacher is saying. We're too much focused on what the preacher is saying, beloved one. We must listen to what the spirit. My God, my God. I was so blessed at the women's meeting on Saturday. My God, because it reminded me that God is yet alive in his church. Hallelujah. Because whenever the Spirit of God shows up, amen, it's a sign, amen, that I have not forsaken my church. Hallelujah. I have not forsaken my people. Glory to God. The Spirit is yet in operation. Amen. Uh, amen. He said, buy some eyesight. Why? Because we don't see what we should see. Amen. We, we, I said the other week, Amen. Caleb and Joshua saw what they saw. The ten spies saw what they saw. Everybody saw the same thing, but one was, two was looking through the eyes of the Spirit. They were looking through the lens of the Spirit. And the lens of the Spirit said, yes, yes, we're like grasshoppers. Yes, absolutely. Yes, 
It, it, it's, it's tough. But guess what? God said we can do it. God said we can do it. God said we can do it. And if God said we can do it, then we must give him the glory. Amen. He said, I counsel thee by go. No, no, let me go down. Anoint, I want to stay. Anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Look, watch this, 19. Now this is John writing to the seven churches. This is the seven church, the Laodicean church. Look at verse number 19. As many as I love. Hallelujah. You see, when rebuke is coming, you know, beloved ones, the man who was in the spirit, and I'm being gender spirit, I'm just a man or woman, they understand that this is love rebuke. This is not hate rebuke. This is love rebuke. Amen. Hear what the Lord says. He, he, now, now, I'm going to put my little spin in. He's saying to them, don't get upset because I tell you that you're poor and wretched. I'm telling you because I love you. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Now, verse number 19. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Be zealous and turn. If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves. And what? Seek my faith. Turn. Not just cry, but turn. Not just be convicted, but be converted. Turn. Turn from their wicked ways. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now this is verse number 20. is, is, is beautiful because what we see here is the image of the Lord outside of his church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, the church belongs to him. And here we have an image of him knocking on the door. He owns the house. Hallelujah. But we have put him out of his own house. And we are trying to do it our way. And he is now on the outside of his church, knocking on the door and saying, will anybody let me into my church? Amen. But when, 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 per, when persons are not spirit-led, they believe all noise is Holy Ghost noise. You, you miss what I'm saying. No, no, no. Any kind of noise won't do. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible said it was noise abroad, but that was a sanctified noise. Amen. All noise is not Holy Ghost noise. Some noise is just noise. And you know what that does? It gives you a headache. <laughs> so the Lord is saying, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. And if anybody hear my voice, what voice, God? What are you saying? What I've just said, I counsel you. If anybody hear my voice and will open the door, look at this. As bad as things might be, as tough as things, you see, if anybody opened the door, I'm so desperate to get into my church. I'm so desperate if any man would open up a door. He said, I will come in to him. And I will sup with him and he with me. We, that, that is what you call fellowship. Hallelujah. That, that, that is what you call sweet fellowship. When he comes in and he sups with us and we sup with him. That's fellowship of the highest order. And that is what the Lord, the Lord desires fellowship. And right now, this Laodicean church, what were they? They were out of fellowship. Amen. They were out of it. One thing, you know, I tried to learn about the Lord. But one of the things I know about the Lord, the Lord ain't going to be second to nobody. No. The Lord is not going to be second to anybody. So he is either going to be first, but he's not going to be second. Amen. Amen. So we must invite the, the spirit of the Lord wants to come. 
Amen. And this is but a revelation that is teaching, what did I say? To encourage the church and to warn the church. To warn the church, the Laodicean church, you think that you're rich, increase with goods and have need of nothing. Hallelujah. 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 I, I love it, you see. And I, this is what we, it, it's not that I'm trying to, amen, go back, but maybe I know. But you see, there are some things, principles. Hear what the Bible said. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Come on. Lean not, my God in heaven. Lean not to thine own understanding. Am I teaching tonight? In all thy ways. I mean, don't, don't, don't do nothing without acknowledging me. In all thy ways, acknowledge me. And I will give you. You don't have to beg for it. You don't have to plead for it. You, 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 you don't even have to. I will give you the desires of your heart. But lean not to your own understanding. My God. My God, and we have become, amen. And I say we, I'm not saying you, I'm, not, I'm saying we. We have become so proficient at so many things now that we hardly consult God about anything. And I'm saying we, we hard because why? This one got this, and that one got that, and this one got that, and, and God is standing there, but I have the answer. You have a degree, but I have the answer. You have the experience, but I have the resources. Hallelujah. And we're putting the minds together here. But somebody got to say, what saith the Lord? And Jehoshaphat was in trouble, you know. Jehoshaphat and the, people, the children of Israel, they were in trouble. The Bible says in Chronicles, they were surrounded. Everywhere they looked, they saw enemies. Hallelujah. They were surrounded by their enemies. And when Jehoshaphat said, Jehoshaphat put everybody on fasting. He said everybody, he said up to the dog on a fast. He called a, he called a national fast. And in the midst of that national fast, Jehoshaphat said, is there a word from the Lord? My God. We, we don't know what to do. We're backed up on every side. Is there a word, God? Are you going to leave us here or are you going to speak to us? And the Bible said, and the spirit came upon Jehaziel. Jehaziel wasn't even a prophet. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you see, when God ready to speak, he going to find somebody. The Bible said the, the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. And he began to prophesy and said to Israel, the battle is not yours. Hallelujah. It belongs to the Lord. He said, the enemy that you see today, you're not going to see them tomorrow. Come on, beloved one. That's what a word from the Lord. A word, a word. If there's ever a time we need a word from the Lord. But we can only hear from the Lord if we're on the Lord's wavelength. And the Lord's wavelength, it goes back to the spirit. It, it, it goes back to the spirit. It goes back to this bit. That is the key. That's the heartbeat of the church. The spirit is the heartbeat of the church. If you take the spirit from the church, we may as well be Catholic. We may, well, let me not get specific. Some of me write in. We may as well just be a nominal church. Because they sing just like we sing. They preach just like we preach. And some of them are doing it better than us. Some of them are presenting it better than us. But what we have always been able to say, glory to God, hallelujah. What we have always been able to hold on to was the power of the Holy Ghost. And brethren, when we lose that, we've, we've lost everything. That, 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 that's our identity. The Holy Ghost is our only hope. Hallelujah. In a dark world, the Holy Ghost is our only hope. And when we lose that, when we lose the power, 
Glory to God. When there is no unction. That's all we have now. Glory to God is the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It's to be able to say, Lord, you speak. God, here I am. Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. And be able to, 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 to with, with power, hallelujah, articulate the word of God so that souls are convicted under not the power of the preacher, but the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. The power of the Holy Ghost. And we've seen, we've seen it, man. People will come to church to a baby blessing. They, don't th they didn't come to get no Holy Ghost. I don't hear nobody talking to Bishop. They, they came because their family member with son was getting blessed. But the power of God. Hallelujah. And the Lord filled them wearing what they was wearing. Glory to God. Nobody had to tell them to say, Gee, 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 gee. the Holy Ghost filled them. That's the power. That, saints of God, that's all we got. That's all we got left. That's all we got. And we must not relinquish that. Hallelujah. We must be fervent in our prayer. Glory to God. We must be rambunctious in our worship. Hallelujah. We must be consecrated in our lifestyle. Because God is still God. And he is saying, if you will open up the door, I will come in. Hallelujah. And I will sup. That sweet fellowship. That, that, that sweet fellowship. Amen. When we leave, we can say, and we, and we pray, we can say, it was good for us to have been here. This was not a waste of my time. This was not just a religious activity. It was not just because it was Sunday, but I came and God met us. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Remember what saints say, and the Lord is still doing it, you know. Amen. He's still doing it. When you come to church and you can leave there and say, God met us in church today. He met us. No, no doubt. Amen. Everybody know God was in the house. Hallelujah. God was in the house. The presence of Almighty God. The presence, the power, the unctioning of the Holy Spirit to the extent that when Peter was in Cornelius' house, we've got to finish, the Bible said, while Peter was yet preaching, the Holy Ghost fell. <laughs> while he was yet preaching, the Holy Ghost fell. Glory to God. I'm telling you, no altar call, you know, beloved one. While he was yet preaching, Koma Shendama, I don't know what text he was preaching from. I don't know. Maybe Peter was just giving his testimony. But the Bible said in Acts chapter 10, while he was yet preaching, the Holy Ghost fell. Now watch this. The Holy Ghost fell on people who had not yet been baptized. Amen. It's only we put the cart before the horse. You know, the Lord don't have no special plan. So when Peter saw the Holy Ghost in operation, and when Peter identified that it was the same Holy Ghost that he got, he said, then how can we forbid Gentiles to be baptized in Jesus' name? Well, before he said, now I know that God is no respecter of persons. Hallelujah. But in every nation, God has chosen out a people for his name. That's the power of the Holy Ghost, beloved ones. And, and when we, we, when we, we must not relinquish it. We, we, must, we must continue to keep the fire wheels burning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we, the, 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 let me finish. It's the legacy of anointing that we have. We have seen it in operation. We are benefactors of it. Amen. I, I, I teach when I teach this the other day. I said, I remember when the mothers, and I could call their name, they would stand up at, on the Sunday, Sunday evening testimony. Said, they'd stand up and they'd say, Listen, don't listen to the voice. They're telling you beforehand. They, come on. They are telling us before they begin to sing, don't listen to the voice. <laughs> but 
when mother began to sing, thou my everlasting portion. Mother may not have had voice, but mother had an anointing. And it is the anointing. Beloved ones, not only does it break the yoke, it makes the difference. Glory to God. It, 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 not only does it break the yoke, but it makes the difference. So someone said, Bishop, what do I need? What do I need? I want to serve in the church. What do I Get an anointing on your life. Get an anointing on your life. How do I get an anointing? It's called consecration, beloved one. There, there is no one, two, three steps. No, it's called sacrificial living. Hallelujah. That's, that's how the anointing is birthed in the life of the believer. Amen. It's called consecration. Bishop, I want to serve in the church. I want to do this. I want to do it. Get an anointing on your life. Walk in the spirit. And I'm telling you, if you walk in the spirit, there you won't, you'll be tired to hear people worship when you lead worship. You'll be, if you ever lead worship in the spirit, after praise and worship is over, we'll still be praising and worshiping. Hallelujah. If you ever preach in the spirit, people will stay here till four o'clock to hear the word of God. Y'all not saying nothing to me. But it is incumbent upon having an anointing on your life. So in Luke chapter 4, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For it hath anointed me. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord hath anointed me. The word anointed means has and supernaturally enabled me. That means in my body, I'm able to do what I cannot do only by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach. So the Bible said when Jesus preached, they said, never have we heard anybody. Ooh, never have. When Jesus taught, they said he spoke as one having authority. Why? Why? Because of the anointing. Hallelujah. It's anointing me to preach deliverance to the captive. That means when, when, when Jesus is full of the spirit and he tells legions, demons, get out. There was no if and a but. Glory to God. They have to come out. When anointing speaks to blindness, you're going to see? <laughs> blindness have to give way. When, when woman touch anointing, healing is going to happen. There is no struggle. There is no, there, there is no pressure. The anoint, I, I've heard it said and it's true. The anointing makes it easy. There is no struggle. The anointing man, when, when the anointing is in operation, oh my God. Yeah, the, 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 the spirit will choose the song to sing. The anointing will choose the message. You ever prepare for a message? Amen. I'm a, and as soon as they put you at the debris, the Lord just switch, switch the, the. You don't study. You don't know nothing. But the Holy Ghost will give you everything you need. The power of the anointing. Amen. I've experienced. The anointing will make you quote scriptures you didn't even read. Huh? Quote scriptures that you didn't even study. The anointing of God. Never. This is what they said about Jesus. Never have we heard anybody. <laughs> no, the anointing makes the difference. Hallelujah. 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 The anointing, beloved. The spirit. John said, I was in the spirit. You're, you're not going to see, you're not going to get. You know, revelation means uncovering, unveiling. There can be no unveiling without the Holy Spirit. Thank God for it. Hallelujah. Thank God. And we cannot relinquish it. Cannot. Bishop, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? Get an anointing on your life. Get an anointing. Get an anointing. How you get an anointing, Bishop? Fast and pray. Hallelujah. Live right. Stay in his word. 
feed off the fat of the land and see what God is going to do. What did he say? There is no good thing. Will the Lord keep from those who are walking up? And so the challenge, Revelation John said, write, the Lord said, write unto the churches. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't say, well, the church is in trouble. The church is not in trouble, you know. The church is sleeping. The church, the 21st century church has become weary in well-doing. And so what does, the, what does the Lord have to do now? Awake. Zion, awake. Church now is like the five foolish virgins who know that the bridegroom is coming, but they, they have fallen asleep at the wrong time. And so now, what is the man? Awake! Awake! Zion, awake. Awake and trim your lamps. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Ghost baptize us again. In his spirit. 22 chapters, 404 verses, 12,000 words. Not only the revelation of John, but the revelation to John. John, I want you to write. I'm going to show you some things and I want you to write. Write to the seven churches. So from chapters 1 through 4, verse 1 is the church. That's the church. Then Israel is from 4 through 20 and the nations of the world. Because remember now, God has not cast away Israel forever. God will once again turn to his chosen people. So we, the church, have been grafted in. Hallelujah. My God. Paul said to the church in Ephesus, we who were not a people have now become a people. Hallelujah, glory to God. By the grace of Almighty God. Let the people of God say amen. 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 I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for your word to our hearts. We thank you for the power of the anointing. We thank you for the victory of the cross. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will continue to pour into us. Pour on us and pour into us so that our cup will be like Psalms 23. Thou anointest my head with oil. Verse number 5. And my cup runneth over. Thank you for these thy people and those that watch online tonight. I pray that the anointed would move through the airwaves and souls will be touched and blessed everywhere as we continue to give your name the glory and the praise. Thank you now for all that you're doing, Lord. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the anointing because it is the anointing that not only breaks the yoke, but it is the anointing that makes the difference. We give your name praise now. In Jesus' name, let every grateful heart say amen. Amen. Can we just worship the Lord just for a moment tonight? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Hallelujah. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And if any man would open up unto me, Jesus said, I'm, I'll come in, I'll come in, and I will... So, Father, we love you tonight. We appreciate you so much. And we give your name the glory.